Hey guys, the primary purpose of a network attached storage is the ability to share your files and folders across the network. So today we're going to take a look at how you can do an SMB share in TrueNAS. I'm using SMB as the protocol because I'm primarily running Windows machines and some other devices that support the SMB protocol. But if you've got other Unix based devices or Apple based devices, there are a couple of protocols in there that you'll be able to use to share on your network as well. So once we've logged into our web interface for TrueNAS, we can go ahead and expand the sharing option on the left hand side, and then we can select Windows Shares SMB. So that's going to tell us that we've already got a couple of data sets shared on the network, but we want to create a brand new one. So we're just going to go up here and hit the blue add button on the right hand side. We can see on this page that we're getting prompted for a couple of different options. The very first one is what is the path of the information that we'd like to share? So we can share information at a couple of different levels of granularity. So if I expand the mount directory, then you can see that I've got the option to share entire pools. So Mini and Bolt are the two pools that I have on the system. But if I expand the Bolt pool even further, you can see that there's a couple of data sets listed. And I've already uh, shared the archive and scratch data set. So I'm going to select the shareable data set, which is the one that I want to share in this video. So if there was any information in that data set, there's not. But if there was like directories or files or folders, I could even go down and I could share those at an individual file and folder level, which is very, very convenient in some situations. So the next option is the name of the data set that I'm going to use. I'm just going to leave that as the default. There's no need for me to, um, to change that. And then we get prompted with the purpose of the data set. So I'm going to leave that as the default share parameters, but there are a couple of different options in there that may be useful for your use case. Things like if you've got different types of machines on your network, so you want to use multi-protocol shares, ones that share AFP versus SMB, um, or if you've got Unix machines on, on, the, um, on the network instead of just Apple machines, those can be kind of useful there. We don't, we're just going to be using the SMB protocol, so I'm not going to make any changes there at all. You can add a description to help you identify the share later on. Again, I'm not going to to bother because I'm going to know exactly what this share is for. And then you've got the option to share, to create it enabled or disabled. Uh, I don't know why you would create a disabled share, but maybe there's a use case uh, out there as well. You do have a couple of advanced options, which we're not going to look at too seriously here, but it includes things like allowing guest access and allowing time machines and exporting recycle bins and a few other things that I'm not going to drill too much into here. So we're just going to hit back in the basic options. And then we're going to hit the submit button. After TrueNAS thinks about it for a while, it's going to prompt you to see whether or not you want to set up some permissions for the share. We do, otherwise no one's going to be able to access the information on the share, so we're just going to hit configure now. Uh, so then you get prompted to see whether or not you want to choose a, a preset ACL. Uh, I'm not really happy with any of the presets, so I'm going to go ahead and create a custom one. I want to share just with a specific user, so I don't want to use any of the presets. And then this page is a little bit confusing. Uh, I found it kind of difficult to navigate the first time that I was prompted with it, but we're just going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here and then hit add an ACL item. So this expands out and it starts asking us for a couple of different options. A lot of these we're just going to leave as the default, but the very first one that we get asked for is who do we want to share it, um, share it with? So it's, it's actually not specifically who, it's what type of user or what type of uh, account do we want to share it with first? We can share it with a user, we can share it with a group, we can share it with everybody. Um, we're going to go ahead and select user here because I have a specific user that I would like to share this information with on the, on the network. So if you don't already have a specific user in mind, go ahead and check out my video on creating users and groups. Uh, I will link it in the description below and uh, go ahead and create that user and then come back and we can configure the, the ACL rules. So then when I select user, I get prompted for which user would I like to share it with. So root is an option here. It's important to actually say that root cannot be used to um, assign a share to. You will not be able to access your share with the root user. Uh, TrueNAS made a change uh, one or two versions ago, I think in TrueNAS 12.1 or 12.0, so that you are not able to, to access your shares with the root user. This is a security thing. It's just to try and discourage you from using root for everything. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. I've created a YouTube user that I'm going to go ahead and share it with. And then once I've done that, I'm going to leave all of these other options uh, exactly as they, they are. And I'm going to hit save. So once TrueNAS has finished setting those permissions, we still need to set up the share on the Windows side. So if we go ahead and open up a file explorer on Windows and then click the network option on the left hand side, we can see that the, the Windows network is already picking up any machine on my network, including my NAS, which I've called Vault here, which is probably going to be called something different for yourself. So when I open that up, then we can see all of the network shares that I've previously created, including the shareable data set that I created a few minutes ago. So once I go ahead and right click on this option, I've got the option to go ahead and map the network drive, and that will prompt me with a couple of options. 
Uh, the very first one is what the drive letter I want to assign to it. Uh, I'm perfectly okay with the, the default, but you can set it to any drive letter that you want. The next one uh, is not capable of uh, being updated. Uh, it's the uh, the path for the shareable data set that I'm, uh, I'm creating, so that's perfectly fine. You've got the option here to reconnect at sign-in, which is enabled by default. So every time that you log into your machine, uh, you're reconnected to the network share. Uh, you might want to disconnect or to disable that depending on your own personal preference, but I like to leave it enabled. And then the last one is connect using different credentials. So, and this is fairly important, but if the user that you have shared this information with in TrueNAS has the same username and password and is set to have a Microsoft account in the user settings, you can go ahead and use the same user account here. I am not logged in as a user that has the same username and password in both TrueNAS and Windows. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit connect using different credentials. Then when I click finish, it's going to prompt me to use those other credentials. So the user I created had the username YouTube, which is what it's prompting me for here as well. But if I needed to type in my uh, username, I could hit more choices and hit use a different account. YouTube's the one that I want. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and enter the password that I created for it in TrueNAS. Then hit remember my credentials, hit okay. I'm gonna get prompted again for some reason. I'm not really sure why Windows does this, but it does it all of the time. I'm gonna select remember my credentials again. I'm just gonna hit okay one more time. So then the file share opens up on our new network drive. So if I go ahead and just click this PC again, we can see that there's a network drive here. It's got the amount of storage that I wanna use and I can click into it and uh, access that file folder. Um, there's nothing in it at the minute. So the last step for us is to go ahead and to test whether or not it works and I've got the permissions that I need to manage that data set. So we're just gonna go ahead and drop a file uh, in here. And once we open up that file, we can see that we can read from the file. We're also going to be able to type in and say, have a nice day and make sure that we can save that file. Closing it, opening it one more time, validates that our changes have been saved. So that's it guys, that's how you would set up a network share with Windows in TrueNAS. If I can get you to go ahead and do the YouTube dance now, which is to like, comment, and subscribe as the network file suggested, that would be awesome. It really helps to promote the channel and put the content out there. I'm also interested if there's anything else that you'd like to see with TrueNAS. Otherwise, I will catch you guys on the flip side.